Hello and welcome to our first assignment for the course in which we will be focusing on really the backbone of uh, Indian painting and drawing which is line. In particularly in this practice uh, we and in particular in this assignment the idea is to train and flex the hand muscles so that it can really go into minute detail while maintaining the consistency of the line. And there are lots of different ways of approaching the line within this vast art form. And a brilliant example of that is this particular artwork in which you have uh, two elephants. Uh, and in that you can actually see it's a particular genre of painting in which you use the black ink technique which completely focuses on the line. Everything is structured around the line and particularly when you focus in on the trunks of the elephants, you can actually see in minute details these beautiful parallel lines that are contouring around the trunks, giving the entire animal the, its shape. And this is something which one has to develop through a lot of practice, which is why today we'll be starting with a basic line assignment, which will be a week long assignment in which we take, as I will show in the demonstration, uh, we make with pencil a grid of around 12 by 6 inches and then we start practicing horizontal lines, vertical lines and then diagonal lines and keep repeating that practice over and over again. And within this exercise, you also start to understand so many underlying uh, practices and underlying uh, value systems of this tradition in which repetition of the stroke plays a vital role. The idea is by repeating the same stroke or same gesture again and again, you perfect it. And also that links to a more deeper engagement with the tradition in which the belief is that you already have perfected master artists who have left behind this treasure trove uh, of uh, amazing artworks. And in order to proceed and develop and evolve in this art form, first and foremost, you have to perfect your own skill by meditating and contemplating about on the work that has gone before your own present time and thus by learning through imitation and through the copying. And that starts really with the first assignment in which you create a line, a tiny, thin, minute line, and then you try to repeat it perfectly over and over again until you come to the point where you can actually zoom in with your eyes and start seeing these minute, uh, literally minute worlds that start opening up because your hand, your brain, and your eye start to uh, come into unison and start to focus in on the piece of literally a one by a one inch square in which you are working. So that's how we will begin today's assignment by uh, basic materials. We will be using pencil, graphite pencil. And yes, that is not a traditional material because 400, 500 years ago, they were not using a Stedler pencil, for example. <laughs> this is very much a modern contemporary modification and adaptation of a traditional practice. Traditionally, novices who would start the practice would most probably start with a, a squirrel hair brush. But then you also have to understand they would have a lot of time. They would have 10, 15, 20 years to perfect that artwork. So they could make mistakes. They could take their time. With pencil, you have more control. You don't have to worry and fuss about the water content and spillage. And you just, everyone's used to the pencil. We've all worked with the pencil. It's a really easy medium to sharpen and use. So it's something which is familiar, something which gives everyone an entry point into this art world. And so with that in mind, we start with a very simple basic line assignment using paper and pencil. So let's proceed. So this assignment is, you can divide it into three parts. The first is preparing your pencil, a 5H or a 4H pencil would do. And for that you need a blade or cutter and then you also need a really small 500 or 600 number sandpaper to sharpen the pencil tip 
very, it should be really almost like a needle uh, tip. It should be sharp. So we start with that and then we move on to the uh, paper itself. And on that we make a grid. This sort of fits around a 12 by 6 inch grid. So we will end up uh, uh, having uh, small 1 by 1 inch squares in that. And then the third and final part is of course the assignment itself which should take around you know, a week uh, completing all the squares. So let's get going. Make sure not to cut yourself. <laughs> so the idea here is that you're, not ob you're obviously not cutting it like this because then you can cut your uh, thumb or something. So you're pushing out. Always make sure to push out. The, and the way to control this, if you just do it like this, then you won't have any control. So the idea is that you put the blade here and do not make a very deep cut into the pencil, just a really shallow cut into the pencil and then push it with your other thumb like this. So you're just taking out shavings gradually. And open it more and just push it with the thumb. The idea is to make a torpedo shape, something which will go and taper in to a point. So we're not hacking it into the pencil, we're just shaping it very gently. And as you start doing it, make sure to keep rotating the pencil so that it's evenly shaved. If you only start focusing on one end, then it'll be very lopsided, it'll be flat from one side, round from the other. So keep rotating the pencil like this as you are shaving it. So every time I make a cut, I gently rotate it around so that all the, it goes 360 degrees. So now you can see that gradually the shape is taking place. Then you can move a little bit further back. We don't need to have the whole thing, of course, but just to have a shape. And as with everything in Indian painting, you want to also have a aesthetically nice looking tool or any tools that you're preparing or making, they should also look nice as well. Make sure to always push with the other thumb. Don't push with the hand that's holding the blade, otherwise it'll, you lose control and it'll, it might break or not be even. So now you can see the shape coming out. Then we can, I can show the completed one. So that, because that, that's where it's going now. So this is, uh, once you have it, it should be, it should look like this. Even from all sides and has a sort of torpedo like taper. So 
So, the next step that we will do is to sharpen this pencil that is a key um, aspect as well and so, we use the sandpaper and once again because this is a really long tipped pencil uh, and we do not want it to break and it is a fragile pencil you make sure to put your, uh, your uh, index finger exactly where uh, the graphite meets the wood. So, that it has some support and then you just start shaving it gently. So, it should almost have like a needle or a torpedo like form or shape. And once again I am gradually rotating it evenly that is very key to uh, important to do because if you just keep it doing it from one end then it will just become like a uh, ink pen nib and you do not want that it needs to be even from all sides. And then once you have done it quite a few times you can see in good light whether it has a tip which is sharp and you can also check it here ouch it should pinch it need we need to have it very sharp. So, once we have done that then we can move on to making the grid. We also try to keep our workstation clean always. So, this is carbon of course, because we have just been sharpening the pencil. So, make sure to clean that because if you smudge your fingers with it and then you touch the paper that is smudged we do not want that we need a very clean pristine surface to work on. So, just take a tissue paper and just clean out the carbon and make sure to keep the sandpaper away from where you will be working. And uh, because we have these really fragile pencils which can easily their nibs can break. So, make sure to take a small like photocopy paper or any piece of paper and make a cover for it. It is really easy to do just uh, cut the paper in half or quarter size roll it up and fold it from the top and put tapes both at the top and at the bottom. So, that you can close it. And this is just the way uh, one can sit cross legged in the class uh, students will be sitting with backrests. So, that might be easier for them as well. So, you do not have to sit like this, but this is an easy posture if you cross your leg you can keep your back straight that way. So, what we will make is first and foremost a rectangle that is 10 by 6 inches in size. And you do not have to worry about be it being perfectly in the center or anything you can just be anywhere as long as it is 90 degrees. So, that you can make a grid inside of it. So, the easiest way to start by making sure that you have 90 degrees is to use this triangle. Just make these two lines that join at a 90 degree angle. And then you can measure them. All right. Then we just mark it up at 1 inch distance 
all sides so that you have a the 10 inches marked on this side. Six on the shorter sides. And once we have those marks, we just join all the lines so that we have a one by one inch square grid of 60 squares essentially. So, here is the rectangle, rectangle that we have just made 10 by 6 inches and now in this we will make uh, one by one inch squares. So, after making the 10 by 6 window, we join all the lines in a grid, so that it looks like this. And, then, and as you can see, I have already started the assignment in this grid and I will continue exactly from where I started, uh, where I left at. The aim of the assignment as you can see in this zoomed in image is to make four types, four directions uh, of uh, lines. In the first box, we start with parallel and all these lines are always parallel. Remi you must remember that, that they do not meet, they are all parallel. In the first box, we will start with making vertical lines. So, the idea is to keep the hand as straight as possible and the line as light as possible, light but still visible of course, as you can see in these examples. And when you really notice in this particular example of the assignment that I have started, it starts with a few lines which are you know wavy and they are not very, they are trembling lines, but as I go into the third, fourth, fifth box, the lines become better and that is the idea that when you start you are not in practice, it is like warming up before going full in uh, to uh, an exercise or a sport, you try to do a warm up. So, this is a this is the perfect warm up for that. So, and so, you will all the assignment starts with the first box vertical perpendicular per vertical parallel lines as light as possible, as straight as possible and as consistent as possible. That is the other thing which we really need to keep in mind that the lines do not go from dark to light or dotted or something, they need to be all really consistent. Once you have finished that first box, then you move to horizontal lines and you can start from the top and take the top already line from the grid as your starting point. So, the idea is to keep the lines consistent to each other as well, not to have a dark line and suddenly a very light line. So, all of these things will come by practice. And then the third box you do and you can choose whichever angle you want, but you do these 
angular lines at 45 degrees. So, I have just started with uh, them as a going on one forward direction and then in the final box you do the opposite direction 45 degrees like a mirror image of the previous angular line. And there might be certain hand positions that might come easier to you, there might be others that are difficult and that is the whole challenge to build the muscle as well, as well as the mind and uh, muscle memory. So, that by the time you are into the second uh, row, it is becoming easier and easier. And the idea is to keep repeating that, you do the first four boxes and then you repeat that assignment again, you do the vertical lines, the horizontal lines and then the two 45 degree lines and then you repeat that till you come right to the end. So, that is the first assignment. And from there we will then move on to learning how to use this line assignment in an actual drawing and then you will realize how by the end of this assignment you will be looking at drawing, you will be looking at your paper and any artwork in a slightly different light and you will be able to see more details and you will be able to pay attention, close attention to specific details. So, after this assignment our next assignment will be a, a specific study from nature. So, the final assignment should look a little bit like this and one thing to keep in mind as you pro proceed is, well I am a right handed. So, for me it is more easy to start with the top left corner, so that I do not smudge things that I have already done. If someone is left handed they should start from the top right corner, so that they pro proceed like this. But in any case because we have a grid that is made of graphite and it can smudge, always put either a completely clean piece of paper or a tissue paper on the palm of your hand that you are drawing with, so that it does not smudge. So, keep that in mind that is an important tip to always have either tissue paper or a piece of paper under your palm.